This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! But who? Who was that? Well, everyone's been saying it, haven't they? Keichi Mayabara. I had an urge to yell in anger at my classmates for having so much fun talking about the festival yesterday with Keiichi Mayabara. What the hell are you guys even talking about? Far stronger than that feeling, though, was the sheer uncanny nature of this reality I couldn't understand. A Keiichi Mayabara who wasn't me was in Hinamizawa yesterday. Are we getting timeline, like, merging? Is the Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 timelines, like, merging with this one? As I threw away my humanity, turned into a demon, and was busy beating Satoko's uncle to death, I was having a great time at the festival last night. What the hell? I had to suffer through so much, desperately holding back tears, getting so worn out in that downpour, digging holes, chasing, beating, killing, dragging and burying. Who was this Keiichi Mayabara who had ignored me so and spent such a fun, carefree time at the festival, damn it? Who the hell stood in for me as I put my life on the line working so hard to achieve this treasure-like everyday life? If there was another Keiichi Mayabara besides me, then what was I? On the night of Watanagashi, where one died and one disappeared, in accordance with Oya Shirosama's curse, there was only a demon who had killed someone. This is getting weird. I still think it's our classmates trying to give us an alibi, though. I don't know why they all are, but alright. Dumbfounded, as I succumbed to a horrifying possibility, I looked around at my classmates. To make sure there was nobody extra I didn't recognize among them. To make sure I wasn't among them. You think there was... <laughs> there was... <laughs> no, Keiichi Konyu's friends made up the story, and for some reason it matches the first chapter. Yeah. That's too convenient, though that it perfectly matches the first chapter. It was a horrifying thought. That the real Keiichi Maibara hadn't overslept and had come to school on time. And that I, who was no longer Keiichi Maibara, excuse me, had just waltzed in here. But no matter how much I checked, the only people here were ones I knew. Okay, this is getting weird. The bad I met every time I looked in the bathroom mirror was not here. Oh, Mobius is playing Leafle Company. Hi. Oh, thank goodness, best teacher's here. Is she gonna scold us for being- If she's gonna be like- uh, If she doesn't notice we weren't here in the first half, I'm gonna be a little freaked out. Because there's no way teacher would be in on this. The teacher entered and everyone hurried back to their seats. Upon finding me, who was so stupidly late, she gave me a stern talking to, but I wasn't listening to it. Okay, no, 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 okay, so... Alright, oh yeah, our friends are just like, Haha, he had an alibi. Wasn't our old life supposed to start today? Something wasn't right. It was just strange. It was... I was supposed to go back to my old, fun life after yesterday. I had set foot in an incomparably mysterious world. One that was completely different from my old life and my recent one. Yes. This was, without a doubt, a different world than the one I'd been living in until now. There was no way such an absurd thing could be possible. But, unless it was true, I couldn't explain anything that just happened. In this classroom, I was surrounded by so many faces I knew, and yet I felt isolated. The cicadas sounded no different than they had before now, but they seemed somehow false. The air was parched and dry, too, making me think. Was the air in Hinamizawa always this uncomfortable? Yeah, most likely. Oi, Lena. It's a sly way of asking. To be honest, I was pretty excited afterwards, and I gobbled down some cans of beer. What? I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but I don't quite remember some things. For random babbling, it wasn't a bad excuse. Oh, he's, this is what he's saying to her? Why wasn't there voice acting? That matched. I called Mion and told her to take Satoko in my place since I wouldn't be able to meet up with them due to how things I had to do. Satoko-chan 
That was the same, too. Mion said that when I called her. That everyone had already decided to invite her. So <laughs> that, that is true. I'm trying to compare Keiichi's thought process to my 15-year-old brain's thought process, but they're still pretty different. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have to worry about that anymore. That part didn't matter. What I was trying to ask was... <laughs> I was a little bit inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we haven't thought that far ahead, but yet. Yeah. At my sudden threatening demand, Rena was at a loss for words. Oops, I shouldn't have rushed that. I told her I was sorry. <laughs> My 15-year-old brain was, um, not great. That tracks. Oh boy, Tiki's playing wallpaper engine in the best game. That's true, that did happen. I didn't say that. I never said anything like that. I never even went to the Shrine Grounds yesterday to begin with. I never had the time to stop by a place like that. I went to dig the hole as soon as I woke up. I had a pretty hard time doing it. After that, I snuck into the school and made a call. I called them out and lay in wait. And then it started raining really hard. With that kind of downpour, the festival should have come to a halt. In other words, it ended then. From the time the festival started to when it ended, it would have been impossible for me to have sworn by the shrine grounds. I was already there when Mion and the others dragged Satoko out and brought her to the shrine, and I was talking to Rika. Then, where would Rika say we met? The teacher went out to wash her hands, so I ran over to Rika's desk and asked her directly, Yeah, uh, where did I meet you last night? I had five beers. Rika <laughs> Oh, that's right. I met them at 1500. <laughs> Just accept the alibi. It looked like Rika brought bought it into my battling. Liar! I've never seen the mayor before. I don't want to go back there. I'd never heard of a building called that before. I mean, or uh, maybe I have, but at the very least, I wouldn't know where on the shrine grounds it was. That's not, a whole, that's not a holy place. <laughs> I was too scared to ask anymore. The more I asked, the more it became clear without any doubt that Keiichi Mayabara was present at the Furude Shrine Grounds during the Watanagashi Festival. The clearer that became, the more doubts, no, fears I had. What on, who on earth was I yesterday? Whoever that was, he had a good time in my place and managed to go there the entire day without letting them notice I wasn't there. Oh, right. When did that person leave everyone? This morning, my mother got mad at me for having stayed out so late last night. Which meant that at the very least, that Keiichi Mayabara hadn't come home while my mother was still awake. Dude! How are you not getting that they're like, they know what you did and they're trying to help you out and evade the police? <laughs> I did, this guy's dense AF. The festival would have been closed because of the downpour. If I recall right, when I went back to the house's storage room to get another shovel, I think the clock said 7. Since it was already raining hard by then, the festival would have had to come to a close down before 7. 
If I had returned that early, I would have definitely run into my parents. Or, at the very least, they wouldn't have asked me when I got back last night. So the Keiichi Marabara from yesterday, that meant he never went home. That meant the downpour happened, the festival was broken up, everyone left, but he didn't go back to the house. Um, that means... It means your friends are lying for your sake. When I arrived at the natural conclusion, a wicked chill suddenly froze my spine and climbed up to my brain. That meant Keiichi Mayabara was the same as Satoshi. One day, he never came home. What?! How are you coming to that conclusion? On the night of Watanagashi, he never went home. The downpour interrupted the festival, and on the way home, he suddenly disappeared. And I, who was dealing with the corpse, went home without a problem. What are you... This guy is a lunatic! I was so tired that I wasn't even hungry, so I went up to my room without a sound and crawled into my futon. Who was I? That much was obvious. Keiji Mayabara. Keiji Mayabara was me. There may have been another one, but th 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 this guy is so stupid! Oh my gosh! That's everybody when I'm failing to guess the plot twist. <laughs> that doesn't negate the fact that I was Keiji Mayabara. Then, that other Keiji Mayabara was what? Not real. Idiot. The voices of the cicadas, steadily filling the classroom, were beginning to bother me. Suddenly, I laid eyes on Satoko. Satoko's expression was dark as always. She seemed completely exhausted. At a life of agony, she couldn't even imagine an ending to. Oh, this poor girl. Yikes. Ah. It's it's interesting because like Satoko doesn't have crazy eyes; she has broken eyes. Oof. Yeah, it's tough. Hmm. What had last night been like for Satoko? Did she have fun with everyone and feel a little happier, even for a moment? And when she went home, the, life, the end of her dream, she'd probably gone to sleep afraid of when her uncle would return. And then, this morning, her uncle hadn't come home. And then she went to school. Right now, she must have still been trapped by the rotten idea from which she couldn't be saved, that her uncle would need her when he, she got back. But you can rest easy, Satoko. Your uncle won't ever be coming back. I couldn't tell her that, it was because I'd killed him. When Satoko realized on her own that her uncle would never return, then that would be truly the end of the long, insane night. That's right. I didn't do anything wrong. Um, you, you definitely did! I did the best possible thing I could, uh, I could have as Satoko's nini. Not an atom in my body regretted it. And look, calm down and think, Keiichi Maibara. From a certain point of view, isn't it convenient there was another Keiichi Maibara? I buried the corpse perfectly. A beginning wouldn't happen. But if worse came to worst, and it got out, and the investigation got to me, I now had a strong alibi, able to profess the fact that I'd been at the Watanagashi Festival. But accepting something so creepy, and using it as an alibi. Still, if I proved I hadn't gone to the festival yesterday, it would do no good and a whole lot of harm. That was what left the really actually bad aftertaste. You'll forget about it, Keiichi Maibara. Everything that happened before today. So just forget about the Keiichi Maibara who was there yesterday, too. Instead, let's watch gently over Satoko for the day her smile returns. I want to know... It makes sense why our immediate friend group would be pretending. It doesn't really make sense how we could get... They could get, like, the rest of the classmates who aren't really friends with us to also be like, Yeah, he was there! Unless Miona's threatening them. Which she does have the authority to do. <laughs> and the day that would mark the end of that insane, all too long night. Uh, sorry, teacher doesn't look quite as cute in this art style, but oh well. Let's go. Goodbye! I thought about many things, and saw my thoughts dispersed by many other things. I didn't know whether or not the time that had been spent worrying or daydreaming, but either way, it came to an end, along with the class. Good student. Cheerfully, our classmates got their things and ran for the hallway. Mion, Rena, and Rika were packing up as well. What about Satoko? The whole day, she seemed deflated. Well, her uncle may not have returned last night, but she wouldn't have known he'd never return. How much I wanted to express that fact to her. 
So Toko packed up her pencil box and math workbook in a messily, and after a dark glance at the clock, heaved a sigh. Then went to leave the classroom. Then, suddenly, somebody placed a hand on her shoulder and stopped her. Mm. Until higher school, you had extra shoes for school, and in technical school, you were clean shoes or buying one to use it. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's a Japanese thing. Her words, possessed by a persecution complex, hurt. I spoke loudly so everyone could hear. Hmm. Satoko always had to tend to her uncle, so club had been on hiatus. In our minds, our club was proof of a calm, peaceful life. Not peaceful. Your club is insane. By enjoying being together, I wanted to make Satoko realize her days of darkness were over. Uh oh. Oh no, okay. <laughs> That's not an answer. Nobody seems enthusiastic. Under a condition. Hmm. This, that was important. With everything up to her, Satoko gave a worried look. <laughs> Let's go crazy! Oh, wait. That's a... Hang on. Oh, wait. No, that's not it. That's not a new... Okay, never mind, I've just never seen that in the console art style before. My uncle might have already be home. Thus spoke her darkened eyes, her mouth unmoving. Satoko with one word, but. She looked down. Oh, he's going to be pushing her. Come on! Rena nearly said something, but she was too late. My arm on her shoulder seemed to weigh her down, and she threw it off. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. What? <laughs> what? Uh... I looked over to Mion for help. But now everyone was looking down. My instincts told me that Satoko hadn't gone to the festival. But Rena said it herself that she went with Mion to Satoko's house to invite her. Satoko-chan... Uh, I realized the absurdity of what I just said with Satoko in front of me. Uh oh. At some point, tears had begun welling up in Satoko's eyes. Satoko was so afraid of her uncle that she couldn't even allow herself time with her friends. And then went home. No, she was even afraid of letting herself have a good time with her friends. To be fair, I had uh, like 12 beers beforehand. <laughs> 12! <laughs> Smiling to herself, her tears began to fall. Uh oh. I hate, I hate this sprite. Oof. Oof. Okay, oh, that's the, that's the console equivalent of that one. Yikes. Oof. Oof. ケイツさんみたいに
みんなで楽しく大騒ぎして楽しくて楽しくてでも今の私そんなのそんなの Unable to withstand such violent emotion, a few teardrops slid down her cheek. Why is she... Okay, this is, this is getting weird now. But even though she was having such a terrible time, not once did she ever say it was hard for her. It was a sad, obstinate bravery. But the days when Satoko had to feel like that were over. Satoko didn't need to. To endure it. To bear it anymore. She could forget all about it now. And smile. She doesn't know that. I was so frustrated at not being able to tell her that directly. Also, um... Just because her uncle is gone, that doesn't mean she's going back 100%. Instead, I said something that I'm not sure I should have said before I thought twice about it. The words were deeply meaningful to me, but I didn't know if Satoko understood them. Satoko shouted with all her might. That definitely did not sound like all of her might. Wait, what? Wait, what? Did we get his identical twin? I killed him. Killed him yesterday. Killed him for sure. And I buried him. Buried him whole. He could never have returned to his house. Oh, is she hallucinating, or is there two uncles? <laughs> what the heck? Okay, I, I hate this. What? Our stories weren't matching up. What the heck? Rika went over to Satoko and said a few words of consolation. But Satoko angrily refused those words and thrust Rika away. Gotta change to this one. This this one's more emotional. Crying, Satoko slowly walked out into the hallway. After a moment, Rika went after her. I couldn't stop thinking about the words Satoko had spoken while crying. I buried her uncle last night, but she said this morning that it was impossible. I buried him last night, so she couldn't have seen her uncle this morning. Okay, either she's insane, I'm insane, or we're both insane. What was what was Satoko? At that point, I heard Mion's cold voice. Ne, Kei-chan. Satoko no oji-san ga kaette konai te. Nani? I said too much. I let my emotions get the better of me. Lena mo kiita yo. Satoko-chan no oji-san ga kaette konai te itta. Rena to the rescue! Dou shite? Nan de kaette konai no? Okashi yo ne. Datte... What? No, Rena, I thought you were covering for me. Yeah, I think we're both insane. Mion, when you look into my eyes, are they reptilian? <laughs> yeah! Oh, no, that's not good. <laughs> Suddenly, Mion and Rena started to speak in strange and creepy voices. Uh oh. What were they doing? Were 
何を言ってるんだ佐都子の推しなんかいない方がいいに決まってるだろうがうん。それはもちろんいない方がいいよね。よね It's getting creepy again. Something, something wasn't right. Gee, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what that something is. Definitely is not the two girls staring creepily at us, is it? No, 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 it couldn't be. It definitely couldn't be. The next thing I knew, Mion and Rena were smiling thinly, and their eyes were dark and muddy in a way I'd never seen before. And our eyes met, and the mud even seemed to fill the air. Satoko no oji wa tashka ni iya na yatsu da yo ne. 私もいなくなった方がいいやつだと思うよでもさ仕方ないじゃない Nothing we can do? Something's wrong. Something's clearly wrong here. What the hell was happening? After a moment, a chilly, liquid like feeling, as though my blood had been mixed with sherbet, crawled up my spine. 仕方ないってそりゃ仕方ないけどでもそれじゃ、佐藤が仕方がなければどうするのかな Yeah, why, why is, what is causing the crazy? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Rena was trying to prompt me to say more. There was really no choice, so I killed him. I killed him to protect Satoko. それは<laughs> 放っておきなよ。そのうち解決しちゃうと思うしさ。Uh -oh. サトコちゃんがおじさんがいるって言ってるんだからいる。Hey, Marty, happy Halloween. Um, I have no idea what the bleep is going on in this game right now, but uh, here we are. At least one or two people here is absolutely insane, and I'm trying to figure out which people it is. ちゃんと昨日もいたし、今朝もいる。Yikes. So, not a so de injanai cana. Cana. Mion and Rena were speaking unbelievably dismissively. How could they be talking like that? Mion and Rena, they were my friends and were seriously worried about Satoko's abuse, weren't they? They would never blurt out something like this. And I definitely killed Satoko's uncle. No matter what Satoko or anyone else says, I wouldn't acknowledge it because him being alive was impossible. There was no way he was alive. It was impossible. And yet, since Satoko herself said he was here, then he was alive. I didn't know why or how, but suddenly Mion and Rena were at my side, staring there silently. I was fully expecting it to go back here with them both staring at us with the reptile eyes. ミーちゃんも来るんだよ。ケイちゃんも一緒に行こう。もちろん拒否権はないからね。Oh well, if you insist. If words could freeze blood, then there was no doubt that they would have frozen me solid. I could hear it, a strange sound, like a layer of thin ice spreading, emanating from every joint in my body. And with them closely at my sides, we left the school, as if they were police officers taking me away. Oops. Okay. They always talked about silly things the entire way home, like they always did, but they always stood at my sides, as if preventing me from escaping. This was strange. Everything about this day was strange. Actually, it had been strange since, ever since the previous night. Yes, thinking back, it had been strange ever since killing Satoko's uncle. Yeah, murder does something to you. The creepy meeting with Takano-san was only the beginning. That insane night was still continuing. Yes, it still hadn't ended. What? How did you get out of here? Why did you stop me? Oh, sorry. No one else. When I stopped, it was distant, but I definitely heard them. An extra set of footsteps. We, yeah, okay, yeah. Yep, yep. We, okay, Keiichi going crazy. Anytime someone is hearing stuff nobody else can hear, that's when they're going crazy. Okay, so we going crazy again. That was proof. Proof that insane night hadn't ended. Mion left where she usually did, and we finally came to my house. 
There's no way we ho There's no way we hallucinated that entire night though. Like that doesn't make any sense. I don't care what mushrooms he was on. Like th that that's not a thing that happens. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um what was it? She was inviting me along on one of her oversized garbage treasure hunts at the dam site, right? But why now? Mion coming along was strange, too. Mm, Mion may have accepted Rena's little hobby, but she hated fishing through garbage, so she'd never come here with her before. And the location specifically being the dam site was a little creepy. The dam construction site was completely outside the flow of everyday life. It was so remote that no one ever went there unless they thought to in particular. Nobody lived there, and there were no lights, so at night it got dark very quickly. I was being forcibly invited there. There was no reason I had to fear Rena and Mion. Besides, weren't, wouldn't the trouble I'd make by refusing them be a pain to deal with? In that way, it didn't seem like going treasure hunting with them was a bad idea. But that insane night was continuing. Hadn't the sirens of instinct been wailing in my mind for a while now? Warning me that Rena and Mion were strange. That I needed to be cautious. The warning sirens were so freaking loud, it felt like my head would split in two. Ah. Uh. We gotta fill in a hole. I gotta wash my dog. You don't have a dog, Keiichi. I need to buy a dog and wash it. Because you two are accosting me. Rena was smiling, but her words made her discomfort clear. You're lying, aren't you? You just made that up now, you liar. That's what Rena's eyes said to me. No, oh, those are her happy eyes. The you lied to me eyes are much creepier. Oh, well, being out in the rain all night does that. <laughs> that wasn't really a lie. My head did hurt a little bit, so I wasn't lying. Rena, she couldn't figure out if my head hurt or not, just by looking at it. After staring me in the eyes for a few moments, she fired a sharp needle-like stare at me. The tension in my body loosened, and I felt like my knees might buckle. Oh, are we going to see... No, we're not seeing Takano. She would have faked her definitely. Oh, are we seeing Coach? Because everyone calls him Doctor? Is this Coach's clinic? I don't... Coach has to play more of a role in the end game because, like, there's no way they would introduce this like new character and just have him not relevant to the climax of the story at all, right? It seemed like Rena had realized I was going to refuse her invitation for a while now. With how serious she looks, she might actually call the clinic later to make sure I went. I couldn't say anything careless. Lying about getting checked out was just an excuse to decline her request in the first place. It didn't matter whether I actually went. Yeah, she's she's uh oh. Are we getting Stalker Rena again? Stalker Rena was by far the creepiest character in this. Another tingle started crawling up my back. There was no ignoring it. Rena and Mion must have been monitoring my movements. That wasn't normal. Far from it. All of it was insane. I did what I did because I wanted my peaceful life back. But what what on earth was all this? It was far from peaceful. Something had gone mad, leaving the world out of order. With the other cage she by Ibarra. With those creepy footsteps I've been hearing. With Rena and Mion acting so curious, and above all, with him being alive. Where was I? Hinamizawa Village, Shishibone. I knew that much. Was this really the Hinamizawa I knew? Oi, Maebara Keiichi. 
ここはどこなんだ I asked, whipping around before the front door, to face the one who has been following in my wake all day. Nobody would have been there, of course. <laughs> Keiichi Marabara, huh? That's what I just called him. Called the one who had been trailing behind me this whole time. That shadowy presence, always clinging to me, like it was constantly watching for the opportunity to change places. Footsteps always following me was another impossibility. It couldn't have been a ghost. So it was just impossible. So the strangeness must have been my ears, my head, or Hinamizawa. Everything I could see was the exact same Hinamizawa I knew so well, and that gave me the creeps.